Hey, what's up guys? Zach Kleindens here. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing phenomenal. I have a special treat for all of my guests today because today I'm interviewing a flooring company who is almost, they're almost at a hundred million in sales revenue. Now this company, it's funny because I was flipping properties a couple years ago and uh, I had some problems with other flooring companies. Like I would go to the big box stores and have issues with them and the service and everything else. And then one of my investor buddies introduced me to Touch of Color Flooring and Ronnie Ramuni. And at the time I was actually out with Ronnie on the site in the properties as he was doing the measurements for me, helped me pick out the colors, helped me do all of this stuff. And over the years, this was a couple years ago, over the years, I've watched Ronnie on social media, on Facebook, his business, Touch of Color, has just been blowing up. Now he is no longer, I don't believe he's no, is in the field anymore. He's now in the office, in charge of growing the operation. And so what I wanted to do is sit down with Ronnie today, ask him a few questions about the business, ask him how he blew the business up, where he started from, how they got to where they are now, and what's their goal moving forward, and how their story could potentially help you and me in the future with our growth and with our mindset and with the ability to take a company and an idea and grow it into a massive, massive movement, no matter what the industry is. So I hope you guys enjoy the interview, ask any questions below, and I'll do my best to answer them and get Ronnie to answer them as well. Hope you guys enjoy the show. See you soon. All right, what's up guys? So I got Ronnie Ramuni in the house. Ronnie and I, as you guys heard from the introduction, we go back uh, probably seven, eight years ago at this point, uh, met Ronnie okay. through an investor friend of mine back in the day. And uh, I want to sit down with Ronnie and kind of go over his company because over the years I've been watching Touch of Color and watch this brand and this business just blow up to something massive. And right before my family and I moved to Florida, uh, Ronnie, we actually went to your showroom up in Harrisburg and did our walkthrough. And I was like, damn, I've been doing business with these with these guys for literally two years before I ever saw their showroom. And I didn't even know they had a showroom. It was massive. So, <laughs> so Ronnie, if you can, man, just tell the audience, you know, touch of color. What is it? Where did it start? And just like, how did you guys get that, that, that first start? And were you part of that start? Yeah. Well, hey, I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, it's good to see you again. It's been a while. Um, I know Absolutely. you left us here in C Central PA. You went, you went and had a better life, and I'm happy for you and your family. It <laughs> sounds like you're doing amazing down there. Everybody wants to be in Florida. Everybody wants to be in the Sun Belt State. So good for you and good for your wife, good for your kids. I think it was the right move. Thank so you, a little bit about a little bit about myself. I'm I'm from uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, you know we're having a hell of a season this year. We're 11 and 0. It's going to be a big game this weekend yep. uh, against Ohio yep. State. But I moved I moved out here um, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, um, the summer of 2003. Uh, okay. My cousin my cousin came to my high school graduation. I barely graduated. I had to take some night schools to get those credits to to get that <laughs> diploma. Uh, I but that, I got I didn't it, have right? to do that, but I know that feeling, bro. I get it. You know, school wasn't really good to me. I wasn't really good to school either. I didn't really pay attention. Um, uh, but my cousin came, he 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 lived in Wilkesbury, which is about an hour and a half north of Harrisburg. He moved to Harrisburg in 2000, started started doing flooring installation. So he was an installer, um, came to my high school graduation, his mom, my mom or sisters. Um, he was in his mid twenties at the time I was 18 and he was, you know, just kind of picking my brain and understanding where I was going. And, you know, to be honest, Zach, I didn't really know where I was going. Right. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough for him to come to my town and fortunate enough for him to offer me a position. Um, and I took it, I felt good. I knew him. I had a lot of confidence in him. So, you know, we ended up in Harrisburg in the summer of tw uh, 2003. Um, it was me him, his two brothers, and uh, one of his good friends. We all lived in a townhouse. Uh, my aunt cooked and cleaned for us. Uh, we all shared bedrooms, right? Uh, and we started this little company called Touch of Color Flooring. Um, you know, we were a flooring provider. We were a dealer. Um, you know, we started uh, servicing apartments, right? That was the that was the kind of the first account locally here in Harrisburg. There was a community that reached out to my cousin and asked if he could service. Them. 
right? He, he thought, wait, maybe there's something here. I can stop being an installer. Maybe I can start my own company. Um, and that's when he launched Touch of Color Flooring. And that was launched, and you were cutting out a little bit there, man, but you said that was launched out of the apartment? Yeah, yeah. So how how do you start? That was like, launched in a townhouse, my aunt's townhouse. In a townhouse, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yep. what, it, what was, uh, it was a flooring idea. Well, he was an installer, right? Right. So when he moved to Harrisburg, he was in, he was installing for or dealers in our areas. Um, so he was a labor guy. Right. He was out uh, installing for a few dealers in our area and decided, you know what, let me I'd like to become a dealer. Um, at that same time, a, a community apartment community reached out to him and asked if he could service them directly. And literally, that is how Touch of Color was born. My wow. cousin was an installer. A customer came out to him, asked him if he could service them directly, and the idea started. And next thing you know, we have five guys in one little townhouse, uh, you know, mapping it out. I mean, literally, our first warehouse was my aunt's garage. It was a 10 by 15 garage in this townhouse community, right? Wow. So we stored our tools. We stored our padding. We stored our carpets. We were accepting deliveries, 50 foot, 52 foot trailers. trucks coming into this residential area. And we're, yeah, trailers coming in, right? Uh, one of the vendors actually called us and said, listen, we can't, we can't deliver to a residential townhouse, right? So we figured <laughs> that component out. But our first few deliveries, literally our first few deliveries was in a community. So I mean, it's insane. really a garage story, right? That's how it kind of started. Yep. Why do I feel like all these companies start off in garages? You see that meme with like Google, Amazon, like all these big companies starting off in a garage. Yeah. Like, yeah. Touch of color. It's always a garage. You know what? Uh, so where, where did you, so, you know, the, it, it wasn't like we're these Ivy league guys that understand business at a high level. Right. Of course you had, we had five guys that he picked, he picked four, two of them were his brother right? One of them was his younger cousin. And then one of his best friends from grade school, you know, it was just, it was an idea that, that, that we had, we all took the risk. We all dove in and we all moved into this townhouse and we trusted him, right? His name is Bill Hamad. Um, he's one of the main owners here at Touch of Color Flooring. Um, you know, we all trusted him. There was something about him that I gravitated to, um, you know, that I trusted, and it, honestly, to this day, it was probably the best investment I ever made. That's phenomenal, man. And so that was back in 2002, you mentioned before, right? That's 2002. That's right. Yep. Yep. So, That's right. So this is obviously 2022 at the recording of this video. So you guys are 20 years in the business now. That's right. That's right. So I came in in 20, uh, 2003. So okay. six months after or nine months after, that's when I kind of dove in. Um, so we are literally having our 20-year anniversary this year wow man so yeah. that's that's crazy man so like where does you got this first apartment complex how big was this apartment complex your first customer how big was that job for you guys so it, it's it's a high rise in harrisburg it's called pennsylvania place there's 300 units in this tower um and they loved us right we were all young and 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 full of energy and we were willing to do whatever for nothing it was the last thing on our mind like let us service you was the first thing and how do we make you happy and how do we show up when you want us to be there and we will just stay here until you say you're happy i mean literally that was our plan right give us a job we will cut it in a community literally uh, out in the pavement we'll cut the carpet we'll cut the vinyl and we'll just show up and we'll we'll do this job at a high level the five of us don't forget in a small apartment that we're doing <laughs> And so, you know, we all kind of seen it. It was like, man, this, this is actually working well. They're, they're happy. Let's see if we can go out and get another account. So that's kind of how it started. Well, that was my next question though, man. So like, how did you guys build this up? So were you guys knocking doors? Were you guys making cold calls? Were you guys like, just, did you start getting word of mouth right away? Like how did that, you That's a great next... question. Cause that, so it's dude, a great real question. Quick, real quick, because in 2003, we didn't have social yeah. media. You weren't branding on social media back then. Right. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. And internet was just kind of taken off. And so we did a few first jobs, right? And we realized, okay, you too, you guys need to be in sales. 
and the three of us need to be installation. And I was one of the sales guys at the time, right? I'm like, oh, listen, I can't do this ops. I, I can't, I can't get on my knees. I'm, I'm you know, I'm too heavy. Uh, it's just hard, right? So we just, we, after a few jobs, we decided that a couple of us are going to go out to the market and pick up accounts. And then the, the few, the few that are left over are going to actually service them. So now we have an operation team and we have a sales team and that's all we had. Right. So the first thing we did is we went to our local gas station and at the time people would have to get this book called the apartment finder. Okay. And this is how people rented units back then. Right. Say you're, say you're interested and renting an apartment right now you just go on marketplace you go on zillow you go you know it's so accessible right then you would get these apartment finder books or the newspaper and you would find apartments that way so we decided you know what this is the best way of picking up customers we are literally going to start on page one and understand who these property management companies are so we went we went to a local gas station they're turkey hill i'm sure you're aware of them they're, of course, you know, yeah. they've been here they're they're a big they're a big player in our town and we grabbed the apartment founder we took all of them because they were free right and we started on page one right there was wow. the first company called de souza brown right they were the first person on page one and the page was like i don't know 50 pages long i remember it. yeah i remember it yeah rudders yeah. Turkey hill all of them all of them had that. and you yeah. had like the car dealers the apartments um the classified ads all of that so we this was like we looked at it we were like well i mean what else better source of leads than this book every property management company is in this book offering their apartments and we decided that we are going to become a multi-family flooring company. So what does that mean? That means that we are only going to floor for our apartments, property management companies. That's our niche. We want to do apartments. If it, if it has nothing to do with it, if it doesn't have anything to do with apartments, we don't want to touch it, right? We want to go out and we want to connect with property management companies, right? So we started off with Sousa Brown. Well, what's the address? There's the address. Me and Scott went right to their home which is out of Philly. They're out of Philly. We went right to their corporate office. What do you guys want? Well, we're a dealer out in Harrisburg and we offer really good foreign sales. Get the hell out of here. Okay, great. Cool. So we showed up the next day. Literally, this was our plan of attack. Showed up the next day. Hey, it's us again. It's a touch of color. It's five of us. We're in Harrisburg. We see that you own 1,500 units in Harrisburg and you are doing your flooring, your flooring providers out of Philly. How can we help you? No, we're happy with their provider. Okay, day three, we're there. It's us again, Scott and Ronnie. Just to let you know, we're not leaving without an opportunity. No, we're good, day four. That was the plan. We just continued yeah. to show up until we, we connected with the right person. Right. And at that moment, they said, all right, go ahead and quote this job. Did you guys Went have up. sales training to know how to do this? Or did you guys just kind of know, like, listen, no. we, this is an opportunity that we want to take it. We want to get it. And we're not going to leave until we get it. Like, did you have anybody showing you guys how to do this? Or were you just doing it on your own? You know, I grew I, I, so the answer is no sales training, zero. I'm 18. Don't forget. Right. Okay. Like I just barely graduated high school. Um, very uneducated, but I had this drive, like, no, just meant yes for me and Scott, right? Like if yep. you continue to tell me no, that just makes me want to come here again. That's what we were good at right now. Course, I grew up yeah. in a, a small business. My dad owned, my dad owned a convenience store, uh, for many years. It wasn't successful, but one thing that I did take from my dad is that entrepreneurship, right? That you just show up every day, seven days a week, right? Yep. Show up, put in the work and something good. So eventually D'Souza Brown, which is still a, a customer till today, oh, 20 wow. years later, is still our customer. They said, go ahead and quote this job. We went out, we quoted the job, called back and said, I think you messed up. Well, why is that? Your price is too low. Your price is too low. That was the conversation. Then we said, well, I think you're paying too much. And ever since that conversation, conversation 20 years later we've done hundreds of thousands of dollars if not a million well yeah because you told, me, you told me you told me that right so 100 million almost right we're, we're on pace to do just shy of 100 million this year when you say this year obviously that's all 20 years right like that's 20 years combined so is that correct 
this year from January 1st of 2022 to the end of this year, we'll, we're on pace to do just shy of hundred million. Dude, I, I messed my whole introduction up to this video. Cause I thought you're doing a hundred million total, like an average, like 5 million a year. Wait, is that no. 5 million a year? Yeah. That's uh, yeah. 5 million a year. Yep. I thought you were doing on average 5 million a year in sales, but you're telling me you're doing a hundred million in flooring sales, bro. This year will be that is nuts. shy of a hundred million. Yeah. It's been great. It's been great. What's your average? Like, like, what's your so, average job, you know, man? just kind of circle back on to our, a thousand bucks. Our average ticket is a thousand dollars. So whatever that is, what does that come out to? Is that a hundred thousand? No, that's 10,000 tickets. I don't know. I'm just, is that 10,000 tickets? Yeah. There? That's nuts. Do the math. Hold on here. Do you have, I, I need a calculator. Do you have a calculator? I was taking notes. I was taking notes. Yeah. Let me see if I can figure this out for you. Divided by a thousand. Yeah, about 100,000 orders. Yeah, yeah, it's about right. Our average ticket is a hundred is is a thousand dollars, right? Now we got some big, some small tickets, but they blend out to anywhere from a thousand to twelve hundred bucks. We're busy. Wow, a little bit, dude. I, I had no idea that was year to date. Like I didn't know that was in one year. That's that's insane. Um, is that just in your local market? Like, is that just that's in a good one question? State? So we're um, so we're we're our headquarters is in Harrisburg. Kind of what we do is out of the Tri County, um, and then I want to say thirty percent is in Pittsburgh. Another fifteen percent is in Philly, and then the other remaining fifteen percent is in Richmond, Virginia. So we got four four locations, right? Wow. Um, and just kind of go back to, to where 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 we started. We, you know, we 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 got this book and we went page by page, Zach, literally page by page, and we just wouldn't. St- take no for an answer right but then we started to realize okay we we have the multi-family community structure cornered in our market right we need to expand we need to start offering other type of flooring sales so in 2010 we decided to get into the builder market so if you were a home builder that built single family homes in the tri-county we want we wanted to offer our service to you. Okay. There we go. You got me? There you are. Okay. There we go. Where did you, uh, where'd you end up from there? I heard everything, man. You ended up with the big okay. home builders and, you know, yep. did the same thing with them and you wanted their business in the, uh, what was it, the Tri-County area? That's right. That's right. So one of our builders in the Tri-County decided, hey, we're going to Pittsburgh. We want you as our vendor. You're coming with us. So that's how our Pittsburgh branch was opened. Another builder said they're going to Philly and we want you as our flooring vendor. And that's how Philly started. And the same thing in Richmond, Virginia, right? We kind of followed our builder and kind of grew it from there. So bro, this takes me to, so I literally just did a YouTube video the other day that if I was to start over in real estate, start over from scratch again, how I would do it differently. And I did this video because there's a lot of real estate agents who fail miserably. And the video was all about niching down. That's right. Finding, finding a niche. I don't, I don't know if you say niche or niche. I hear it said different ways. Yeah, but yeah, kind of. right. Um, but you guys niched down to a multifamily at first, first got mm-hmm. that market, you dominated that market. Mm-hmm. And then what made you transition to new builds? Was it just running out of multifamilies or did you guys just have such a good operation that, okay, we tapped into this, we're good. Let's expand to other different areas. And like, what made you guys go to builders? Just real quick. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're still in the tri-county at this time, right? We're servicing. Uh, multifamily. That's all we're doing, Zach. Only that apartments. Right. It, 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 that was it, right? So we, at the time, we cornered it. We were doing twenty million dollars in multifamily sales, and we decided, all right, is this is this it? If this is it, that's great. Let's manage it at a high level. Let's become very profitable. Let's partner up with vendors to get the best pricing in the tri county. But we wanted more. Right. This isn't this is like, let's say this is six years after or seven years after we started the company. So we went from zero to 20 million in seven years. Right. So we decided, hey, you know, let's open up our doors to other production flooring, which the first thing that came to mind was builder. Right. So we never really wanted a service. We wanted a scalable production business. Right. So we decided to get into the builder world. And that's kind of where it 
kind of where it went from there. So dude, that, that one decision to niche down is probably what made you guys just blow up because I think too many business people. And again, I think we all fall into this trap, myself included, is that you said earlier, you wouldn't just, if it was a, you know, hairy homeowner, you wouldn't take it on. Am I correct in that? Or did you not say that earlier? That earlier? That's right. We, it, it's funny you asked that because we would have a shot. We were, we had at this time, after my aunt's garage, and then we had a, a a garage in the hood that was really bad. And then we graduated to somewhere off of Paxton Street. So random people would come into our shop and we would all hide, literally hide. We wouldn't even want to talk to them wow. because they're, you know, you had John and Sue wanting to talk about flooring in their house and nobody wanted to deal with them. So we would all hide. It was a joke, right? Like anybody, oh, somebody's come in. Let's let's all hide. And whoever doesn't hide has to talk to them and let them know that we are a commercial flooring company. We're not retail home depots up the street. Wow. Dude, that's incredible, man. Like I had no idea that's how touch of color I got their start. And I, you know, the volume is just ridiculous. But that's why I made that video, man, because I think, you know, like you said, not to sound cliche, but the riches are definitely in those niches. And you guys found that's it. That's right. That's um, right. So all right. So there's that now touch of color, man. Like, so you guys started off in this, you know, townhome garage, how many employees today in 2022, how many employees do you guys have a touch of color at the moment? The moment with this. Big so, company? so we have 190 W2 employees, but we also have 150 subcontractors that are active daily for us. So in the flooring industry, the actual installation component to our business is a sub, a subcontractor that provides flooring installation, kind of how my cousin started this. He was a subcontractor that offered installation services. So we have 190 W-2 employees that work for us day in and day out. And we have 150 subcontractors that work for us day in and day out. Wow, man. Quick question then too. So like when you guys first started, I mean, did you guys ever think you'd get to this this level? Oh my God. No, not at all. Not at all. Did you guys even want you know, to get to this level? Like did, did you even want to, or like, did it just kind of spawn, you know? That's, that's a good question because, you know, we didn't really know what we, what we wanted was to service customers, right? We didn't really live the lavish life. We didn't need money. Like right. most of us, including myself, had a second job, right? We were a bartender or a server, right? We just enjoyed working every day, right? We wanted to be out in the world. And if money came with it, it came with it, right? So for us in the beginning, I don't think we ever understood where it would go. If you were to ask me 20 years ago that I'd be here talking to you and explaining how we got to, two, to 200, almost 200 employees, I, I wouldn't say that's possible. Uh, but there was a milestone for us, and it was about 35 million revenue, right? We decided, okay, we can manage what we have, but if we're going to the next level, we need better leadership, right? And it's interesting how, it, you know, like for us, us five guys, we were wearing so many different hats, right? Um, right. And we would just do what it takes. We didn't have titles. Um, you know, we just, you know, whoever's available that night that needs to get back into the, the warehouse or in the morning is going, right? Um, whoever needed to get on that uh, fire drill phone call got on it, right? Um, but it got us to here, right? So we're, we're profitable. We're, we're a juggernaut. We're 35 million. Life is good. Where do we go? Do we just hunker down and stay where we are and become very profitable, right? By all of us continuing to wear multiple hats or do we hire some higher level people to help us scale to the next level, right? And that's what you guys did, of course, right? And that's, that's the decision you have to make. So, so as owners, you have to take huge step backwards, right? And really understand, okay, you know, what got us here won't get us there, right? We need to understand what we need as a company to scale this, right? We need leaderships, we need better processes. And as owners, we need to understand how to manage those. We need to understand how to manage a CEO, how to manage a CFO, how to manage an HR team, right? And how to create these platforms and manage the platforms. That was a struggle, Zach. 
right? Because don't forget, none of us have MBAs, right? Like we're not this sharp tool that was just going around zigging and zagging and, and capitalizing on everything uh, when it comes to managing people, because that's, that, there's a difference, right? There's a difference between going out and getting business and managing it and then actually managing your team, 100%. right? Because right? yep. if you don't have the process to, if you don't have the process and transparency to your team, how are they successful, right? So that was a struggle for a That's couple of years. Curve. We're, yeah, you know, 35, 40. We, we, you know, we hired a CEO, we fired him. We hired a CFO, we fired him. And it's like, man, we, we need to understand how to manage these high-level guys. You know, these guys are coming out of some Ivy League schools that needs a process. And we're just a family-owned company, right? Like hey, guys, we're profitable, but we don't have the structure that you're typically used to in corporate America because that's what we're looking for. We were looking for some guys that were coming out of their corporate world, right, that maybe wanted a smaller feel. But when they came to us, it, it was it was full, right? Um, so that, that was a learning curve. We, we understood that. We, we started taking some courses. We started educating ourselves on managing high-level um, leadership, right? And after a couple of years, we found the right person. Um, we found a CFO that was coming off of a $5 billion company. There was 30 CFOs that he was managing wow. in this company. Um, his name is Jerry Banks. And it was probably one of the best hires we ever had, right? We all sat in a conference room. Um, he's from Lewisbury, right? Okay. In between York and Harrisburg. Yeah. Um, and he looked at our books and he's, you know, he goes, man, you guys are very profitable, you know? And, you guys are running a really good operation, but you're not running a company. You don't have the, the handbook. You don't have the HR. You don't have the accountability. You don't just make We're all doing way too much. You know, that's why you're here. Right. Right. <laughs> We're all ready to take a huge step backwards financially, mentally to help you be successful here at Touch of Color. Okay. So for a couple of years, we, we dove into that space and, and, and Jerry did a really good job of creating something that was transparent to the employees, right? Like, That's this phenomenal. is your job scope. This is, your, this is your platform. This is who you report to. This is our HR. And he was probably one of the key components to our success. That's phenomenal, man. Ronnie, so in a quick snapshot, dude, what is like what is the plan moving forward for Touch of Color? Like you hit 100 million. That's going to be a milestone for you guys, I'm sure. Um, yep. you're celebrating the 20 years in business. What is next? Like, what is, what is the long-term vision now that you guys have accomplished what you thought wasn't possible? What is that next step? Is there an exit? Is there like, what, what does that look like with touch of color? And then also I want to ask you about real estate real quick as well, because I see that you're making investments in real estate. I believe, uh, LBR yep. properties. I saw that. Yep. 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 That's um, right. Okay. So yeah, first real quick, long-term or short-term goal for touch of color. And then uh, we'll transition real quick into the you know, real yep. estate side. Yep. You know, we, we see the correction coming, right? I'd hate to say it and I don't want to get people at the edge of their seat, but it's coming. We see it in the builder world. We see it in the new construction world that we are participate day in and day out. Right. Our goal is to be here, right? Our goal is to be profitable, our goal is to maintain our employees and protect them and their families, right? Growth is good, but maintaining what we have is, is, is front in line, right? Now, as you get big and there's a board, everybody has different opinions, right? Um, but for me and, and majority of the right people here, how do we maintain and how do we protect what we have? And how do we continue to allow our team members to have a job, right? Uh, we have a builder in this area, Keystone Custom Homes. You might know them. Yep. They're uh, one of the largest regional builders in the Mid-Atlantic. They'll build a thousand homes this year, and we will floor a thousand homes with them. Wow. The owner of the company said they're building 500 homes next year. Interesting. That's their goal. We want to build 500 profitable homes. 50% less year over year. That is what 50% less, right? continue to work with the vendors that we work with to get better pricing, um, source better products. So we're importing our own goods from Turkey, from China, from Japan. So we started our import side, right? Um, to kind of weather the storm, right? So we would all be happy to continue to keep what we have. If we grow great, 
but if we can maintain would be the goal. So maintain is the goal moving forward at this point. For Especially sure. The right? economic climate that we're in. and I mean, 50% of what we do, Zach, $50 million a year is in new construction home sales. So if they're saying that, yeah. if they're saying that they're only building half, which will result into a $25 million loss, right? So we'll, we'll need to know how to pick up that 25 million. So when we say maintain, right? Some people think, okay, they're not growing. But technically we are, right? Of so we're course. gonna go from 75, 100 to 75, but let's get back up to 100, right? And that is the conversation we're having on the table. And you're gonna niche down again to go somewhere else on that or? You know, uh, we, I, you know, the, the, the one secret sauce is just more builders, more customers, right? You weather sure. a correction by bringing on more customers. So that's it. We have a team of 20 sales reps in, in the state of PA, right? And some in Richmond, Virginia. And that's the conversation we're having every day with them is, guys, we're going to weather this storm. You have to go pick up more accounts. That's how you're going to maintain. And that's how you're going to grow. And I say, guys, our best salesperson is a woman, by the way. She'll right. do five, five million dollars in sales this year. Crazy. And in our industry, that's 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 a lot. Well, yeah. I mean, you're talking about, like you said earlier, a thousand dollar per installation for five million dollars. I mean, that's a lot of sales. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, she does very well. She's out of the she, out of the she does Pittsburgh and then and then Harrisburg as well. Okay. So, bro, bro yeah. real estate. So now you've had this big company, you guys, you know, you're branching out a little bit, doing some more investments. Uh, are you doing more flips or are you doing more rental properties? So we, we got into real estate knowing, knowing, you know, at the time, I mean, I bought my first investment property. I was 21 years old. Uh, one thing that always stayed close to me is a passive income, right? How do I make money without putting in 80 hours a week? Right. Um, and real estate came to me, right. It just it felt right. And, uh, you know, it looked good. It, it was a part of where I wanted to go and we dove into it. We bought our first property. Oh, I bought my first property how many years ago is that? It's a long time, 15 years ago, right? 15, 16 years ago. Wow. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're back here. I got lost you. We're mainly a buy and hold, Zach. We're mainly a buy and hold. We'll Final. do some wholesales. We'll do some flips, but 80% of what we do is buy and hold. Love it, man. Love it. Yeah, I still have my uh, properties up in Pennsylvania and I'm buying some more down here now too. So, um, Ronnie, real quick, man, before we let the crowd love. go, before we let everybody go. Um, I appreciate your time today with the story, man. But uh, what is one thing, like what is some kind of advice? I mean, I don't know if it's a book that you've read or if it's any kind of advice that you would give to somebody that's watching this. If they're stuck in a nine to five job and they want to have a side hustle, could flooring be a good side hustle for them? Like, real estate be the best side hustle? Like what is it, a piece of advice for you that you would give somebody who wants to get to their next level of where they're at currently? Invest in yourself. Would in be number way? one thing. And, and so whatever, whatever industry you're in, get around the players, right? Invest into people that understand it, invest into coaches, to mentors. Um, I didn't start doing to my mid thirties and it was the best financial um, investment I've made because you just get around people that give you guidance, right? That give you a direction. My first 10 years, I tried to learn it on my own. That, that thought is gone for me, right? I want to pay you, tell me how you did it, right? And then I'm going to, instead of learning in 10 years, I'm going to do it in year two, yep. right? So invest in yourself would be one and think bigger is, is, is another idea. Is actually, I'll tell you what, what I mean by think bigger, right? So, and, and this is not, has anything to do with flooring. It has some stuff to do with LBR properties. My goal was to touch a hundred units. I'm going to retire at a hundred units, Okay. right? 16 years later, I've touched 700 units that we bought, we've sold, we've managed, we've wholesaled, we've flipped. We're still holding on to seven uh, to 400 of those doors, right? Wow. Just think bigger, think bigger. Like if I would have thought a thousand units, where have we been? I love that you just ended with that because I literally, um, I just told somebody yesterday, man, I used to write down my affirmation. I'm selling 12 million a year in real estate. 
I wrote it down for like years, like in 2013, 14, 15. And then, dude, now I sell 12 million by, by the month of April in a year. And yeah. you know, April to May, I sell 12 million. And it's just, it's crazy. Like you just said, think bigger. And I look back at those notebooks because I still have them to this day. And um, I have them time stamped and everything. And I'm like, damn, what if I wrote down 20 million? Yeah. You know, what if? What would have happened? Yep. So I love that you ended it with you that know, because that's huge. Think bigger it, is a massive, massive one. But it's the a massive. Is, we yep. we limit ourselves, Zach. We limit ourselves. We think, okay, a hundred doors, fourteen million. Ten, I, oh my God, that's no right. Like, just make this big plan that if you got halfway there, that's a success. I love you that. Dude. That's awesome. For sure. For sure. Yeah, Just think big. And then, you know, in ending here for, for all these young guys that are going into the game and you can relate to this and I can relate to this. People are just, they want instant gratification. Right. And that doesn't work. Nope. Right. You got to put the time in, you got to understand your craft. You got to understand your confidence level. You got to understand your industry. Become the Michael Jordan of your industry and you will see the money come through. If you're chasing the money, it's not going to come in. Chase the craft. Become the best at whatever you do. If that's selling real estate or laying floors, be the best at it. That's awesome, man. That's a, it's a huge help. And that's, dude, it's, it's so big because like you said, be patient, like have relentless patience because- in time, dude, you're not going to die anytime soon. We hope not. We don't know when we're going to die. But the average person, the average male in the U.S. lives to be 83 years old. So if you're, yep. if you're 35 years old, 30, like myself, I'm 34. And a lot of times I will kick myself in the ass for not being at a certain level I think I should be at. Sure. I'm also like, well, damn, I'm only 34, though. Like I shouldn't be like, maybe I shouldn't be there yet because if I got there, I'd be bored as hell now. Right. Right. Um, right. So not always have that instant gratification, but have that patience to get to that level because everything happens in the right time. And that's why you need to think bigger because you have, you know, we all say time flies by because it does. But sure. at the end of the day, dude, like we still do have time. A lot of time, a lot of time. You know, Dave Thomas, the owner of Wendy's, I believe, made his success in his mid 60s. Think about that for a moment. We're talking about our mid 30s, right? Like, I'm not even, I feel like I just got started, Zach. Like, life just started for me, yeah. right? I can't wait till I get into my mid 40s, right? My risk tolerance is going to increase heavily because I'll have the income, I'll have the net worth. Like, I'm building up to when I'm 45, where I'm going all in. Like, I'm going all in at 45, brother. I think about the same thing, dude. Like, how, like, like wow, I'm 34, but like, wait till I'm 45. Like, watch what happens when I'm 45. Bro, I was poor once. I know how to, I know how to be poor. I'm okay. Right? Like I'm going all in. Let's see what, like for me, I want to like, there's three things that I, that I, that I need in life. Right. I need something that, that withstands that lasts longer than me. Right. So I need endurance. Right. I want to build something that, that for generations, people can piggyback off of or live off of or understand that's one. Right. I want to win. Yep. I, you know, I played ball today at 12. I want to win every game that I play in. I want to win. So that's two. And I want to have a community impact. That's a big one. When I go away, when God takes me, right. I want the community to know that he gave his heart and soul. Yep. And those are the three, th three things that are important to me as well as my friends and family. Of course. And that's the legacy so. that Ronnie Ramuni will leave behind. <laughs> God willing, man. I hope so. We never know, you know, yeah. you know, just, you got to take risks. You got to take, you know, you got to take your chances and you got to dive in. So you're, you're doing listen, it. You are doing, a, doing, you are your doing thing. a big thing for your community, bro. You have employees there that count on you guys. Appreciate that. Yep. Yeah, man. So like, that's, a, that's a huge thing in and of itself. So Ronnie, dude, I appreciate your time today, man. I know you're a busy guy. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being on yep, the show. Yep. Um, thank you. Thanks for having me. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. Me. Yes, for sure. So they can find me on Facebook and Instagram. It's uh, Ronnie Ramoni, R-A-N-I, uh, R-A-M-M-O-U-N-I. Um, if you want to tag me on, on your show, you could tag me. Um, okay. There is one thing that I can definitely get better is definitely my social media, for sure. We all can, <laughs> man. It's not just you. It's yeah. everybody. It's all of us. I know. Right, right, right. So Right. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you asking to come on. This is, is good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a while. And 
I'm happy for you and your family again that you're doing very well. You made the right move, man. All right, guys. So that wraps up today's interview with Ronnie Ramuni at Touch of Color Flooring. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. Uh, I do apologize. You're going to have in the video where you, you know, Ronnie cuts out quite a bit because of internet connection, but uh, I hope you guys were able to get some value, get some bombs from Ronnie. Ronnie's a very knowledgeable individual, uh, very helpful, and just a very genuine individual that's happy to help you, happy to help me, and anybody else who's looking for help. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.